so much for watching the Bunkies YouTube channel where we talk about home tech, lifestyle, and home surveillance as well. Today we're going to talk about the Synology um, surveillance station. So Synology is essentially a NAS drive product. This is a bigger one that we're not talking about, but essentially it's a hard drive that you use to back stuff up. So I initially got it to back up my computers and now I've grown to the other things that they have available. So I have an older one of this guy right here. It's a five bay, but now this is a six bay. What this does is it allows me to back up my computers, like I said, I can back up my Gmail, I can back up my Dropbox, and it also comes with a package called Surveillance Station. So let's see if I can find it in here really quick. Surveillance. Oh, these are customer stories about surveillance. So they talk a lot about enterprise, let's say home surveillance, that's what we want. So basically this is what you get. I get a home surveillance thing on this NAS drive that's basically a server that's already running in my house. I can hook up some cameras on the outside and I can see what's going on no matter where I am. And if things are going on, it can record it for future evidence if needed. Um, the page itself is kind of boring. It doesn't, it's all kind of marketing stuff. But it does motion detection, you can schedule it, you can stream live, but a big thing is, is it supports a bazillion cameras. So you can see here, these are all the cameras it supports. If you have a particular one in here, you just select the brand. So I'm going to do an Amcrest camera and see what they recommend. And these are all the ones they recommend, which is actually huge. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about setting up the Synology Surveillance Station. Now, when you first get one, the box itself um, that I showed at the beginning comes with typically two camera licenses. What this means is you can hook two cameras up to it for free, and if you want the third camera, you have to buy a license, software license essentially, to support that third camera. What's annoying about this is everything about this is cloud and up to date and this awesome tech. I have to actually buy the license from Amazon and they snail mail it to me, which is ridiculous. Um, to show you, I went to Amazon, I type surveillance station license pack, pack, excuse me, and I'll click it. And this is what I did. They didn't send this to me. I bought it with my own money. I bought this one right here. 5612 is hard to clear with the boss on why we need another one of these when it already comes with two. And the reason is we now have four cameras and we need a fifth camera. So I've already bought two of these to start. All you get is this thing right here. So I have one right here. So they send this in the mail. What's insane is this could very easily be sold within the NAS drive software itself and they could save on shipping this piece of paper to me. Um, inside of it, I won't show you too much because I don't want to give away my number, but it's just a business card with a number on it. That's it. And then don't lose these. Um, I would hold on to them. So the price, I understand that it needs to be supported and all that other stuff. Seems steep for a number, but it is what it is. I bought it anyway. Um, all right, so we'll get into setting this up. All right, so here we are within Surveillance Station. Now, if you want to see how to set this up on the NAS, just leave a comment below. But basically, I went to the Package Center, clicked Install next to Surveillance Station, clicked Open. Here it is. I'm actually using their desktop software to show you this because it runs a lot better than the web interface, but essentially looks the same. Um, over on the left-hand side, there's a live view, a timeline, IP cameras, recordings, a help, and a smart search. The smart search is absolutely great. I've used it at an office where one guy hit another guy's car at midnight and our building happens to see this kind of parking spot area. So you can highlight the area and then hit go and it'll scrub through. At this point in time, it was like three weeks of content and found the particular incident where someone backed into it and took off. Um, now that particular one, there was weather, it was like 100 feet off. So reading the license plate was a no-go, but we got the make and model of the car and they were actually able to find them because they live pretty close. So that's kind of helpful. But it's similar to other operating systems. You click up here on the top left and you get this kind of menu here. I don't know how to zoom in and I'm on a huge monitor, so hopefully you can see it. What I did is I went to licenses and then I entered in the number within this little disc thing here. And then it adds the license, which then allows me to add a camera. 
to add a camera, you go to IP camera, so I click that, and now it shows all of my cameras. So I'll blur some of this out, but to show you, I have one on the front door, and it says it's taken 2.8 gigs worth of space. One on the driveway is taken 3.7. Uh, one in the backyard, which is 26 gigs. This one is a lot bigger. It's just because the dog runs by, it, it records it. Um, and then there's a kind of side yard cam, which 1.8 gigs of space. So yours will be different depending on how you have it set up. Mine are recording 24 hours a day if there's motion. So if it's snowing like crazy, these numbers get a lot bigger because we're recording snow falling. Um, but if anything does happen, I do have this info. So to add a camera, I go to add, add camera, and then it has a quick setup and a complete setup. I'm gonna do the complete. We'll go to next. The camera name, um, this one's actually in our chicken yard. Chicken yard cam. I like to do the camel case. Um, and then the IP address, I'll just go to search and show you what it shows. Um, but essentially, it scans the whole network and finds the particular one. All right, so I know that it's already this one at the top. So what I've done is I plug, it's an Amcrest camera. I plugged it in, I changed the default username and password, and I put a fixed IP for it on my router. So I already know what this is. Um, so I wanted to keep this just to the surveillance station. If you do wanna see the camera setup for an Amcrest camera, do let me know in the comments below. And if there's interest, I will make it for you. All right, so I already know that this one's dot .74, so I'll go to OK. It says this camera has not been integrated with Surveillance Station. It will be added as a generic model and some functions may be affected. Do you want to continue? So I got this camera separately. I did not check the list before getting it, so, and I got it anyway, so here we are. We'll see how it looks. So I'll say yes, and then I'll put in the admin details. All right, so I entered in the password, and again, that camera model is just set to generic Amcrest. I can hit test, and you give it a second to find it and then log in. Um, I've had some cameras take at least a minute or two, and some show up almost immediately. Um, so we will wait. All right, that was way too long. All right, so this picture is very brown. It's winter in Colorado, everything's brown. Um, but there's a back fence here and there's this chicken coop and birds will come right up to this. Um, it's not super close because I wanted to be able to see there's a shed and there's a gate over here on the left. Um, what's interesting is this model camera is the IP8M, I have it on another screen, dash 2496EW. And if I look in here, or if I type it in, I, P, no, let's see, let's scroll down here. 2496EW, it's actually in the list. So if I click load, um, that compatibility thing goes away. So it's actually in the list for Synology that is supported, um, but it doesn't tell me initially. Failed to connect to surveillance line, please check the following settings. So, no, I'll test again. Oh, nice. So when I change it to the actual camera model, it doesn't work. Oh, it's dash 40 millimeter, which is not in here. So I'll go back to the top. So this particular one is in the list as two versions, but I have a third version, um, and that's why. So it's actually good you're here, so you can see between changing the two. Let's see if this works. Now nothing works. Oh, because this changed. Test. Oh, because it changed. Now one thing I do, this happens a lot. It takes, it changes the password on the port. So if you change it before, then you can't get to it. All right, we'll go to next. All right, so video format. <clears throat> this camera supports H.265. Now not a lot of cameras do. I see a lot of people buying Relo Link and they're way cheaper than an Amcrest camera. So you can probably get one of these for 100, maybe 120, depending if there's a sale. Reload link, you can get one 40 or 50 bucks uh, with similar specs. The biggest thing to watch out for is that video format. 
Now H.264 is sorry, 264 is approved it's proven, everyone uses it, everything supports it. Um, you won't have any problems there. Uh, Maypeg is a lot smaller or a lot cruder of a quality. Um, now I'm not an expert in these, I just know that H.265 uses way less bandwidth and file size than dot two six four and that's why I got the six five cameras. So it's cut. I've had these cameras set to four, and upon changing them to five, it's cut the bandwidth that's being used over the network and the amount of storage when there's motion. It's cut in half. Um, so that's worth it to me. Um, so I don't have to keep either upgrading the NAS drives or adding more hard drives. Just for their surveillance, I can use what I got. All right, next. Audio format, I don't do audio. High quality, so I do stream one. Balanced, I usually do stream two. And low, I do stream two. Sometimes I wish there was a three, but there isn't. Resolution, now this camera goes way up and does 4K, etc. The problem is um, when I set it to the highest level at 30 frames, it's actually kind of choppy, so it's not worth it. So I actually bring these down to usually 20 frames, some people say 25, or I bring this resolution down. So I'll bring it down to here, and I'll bring my frame rate up to 20 at the highest, and then stream two, I'll leave it pretty low, and I'll put the frame weight a little higher than what they recommend. And then the image quality, I'll just leave it at that. And you can play with these, go walk outside, send your kids in front of them, whatever. Pre-recording time, what this does is it records all the time, and then if something moves in front of the camera, um, it keeps at five seconds, the motion, and then the post-recording time. So you can see people entering the scene. Um, so I do leave that on. Keep files, um, I usually do 30 or 60. I don't go on a vacation longer than 30 days, which would be awesome. So if I'm gone for a week, I have the video that I can go through if, if needed. Um, I always customize the archive folder name to be the camera, and I always do the prefix to be the camera. And then this is just the storage pool that I have. All right, so right now this is just continuous recording. Um, I wish there were more options in here to do, um, like I want motion only on these times and then continuous, but it doesn't allow that. So I just colored in motion all the time. Um, and then... There's a home mode where if, you're ho if it sees your phone at home, then it's not recording, but you can be home and crap can happen, sorry, um, at any time. So I usually just have it recording motion because I don't care if it gets the dog or birds or whatever, UPS man, etc. So I go to finish, and now that camera is added. So it says right here, chicken yard cam, zero gigs. If I hit play, it shows a preview of it. And there it is, nice and brown because it's winter time. All right, so that's the setup of installing a new IP camera on your Synology surveillance station. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. There is a, a learning curve. I do like recommending these, but it really takes either a tech enthusiast or someone that's willing to learn to jump into it. Um, there's family members that want this kind of stuff. I say just go buy something from Costco that's set up and done. Um, but if you like tinkering with things and playing with them, the Synology NAS drive is worth a look. Anyway, if this was helpful in any way, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Additionally, hit that red subscribe button to see more videos about Synology, home surveillance, and other tech around the house. Thanks again. My name is John, and I'd love to see your comments below. Thanks.